what's going on guys uh, so got a project coming up this is going to be basically the heart of the project long story short it's going to be mainly for a trailer winch um, it's going to be removable so i can put it on different vehicles tractor back to truck um, wife's car whatever so again this is the uh this is the heart of it, and I'll put a link in the description. Oh, geez, y'all aren't gonna be able to see that for nothing. Hold on. All right, so I don't know how well you'll see it, but there will be a link in the description. Um, this is a 13,000 pound winch. Um, it does have the synthetic coordinates on it, um, and it's only 339 99 I know Harbor Freight makes one, but it has the, the steel cables and I wanted to upgrade to the synthetic cable anyways and anyways and that's a 12,000 this is 13,000 so uh, I don't know we'll, we'll see how well this works it does have the the corded remote plus the infrared remote or the cordless remote so let's uh let's open this up this isn't really going to be an unboxing video but we're going to unbox it and see what's in it but we're not we're going to go through it pretty quick all right so Get some instructions. Looks like a negative pop, negative cord. We got our hook, some mounting bolts, the corded remote goes on our hook. Boom! There she is. Nice fair lead. To it. I wish it was the the roller, but uh, this be fun. There we go. Now, got to mount the winch to make it portable. So got this too. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this either, but basically it's the same brand. Um, it's a winch mounting plate with a two inch uh, hitch receiver. Uh, $53.99 delivered so and it handles from 8,000 to 13,000 pounds so should be able to handle that and again since this isn't a, a video on how to mount this to this there's probably a thousand of them out there it's probably pretty simple you put two bolt or four bolts in there tighten it up you're probably pretty much done and then we have the electrical box thingy it's gonna be over there we'll mount that on there and I'll get back to you once once I'm done with that. All right, so I guess I might could have uh, started with this. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so here's the winch. Um, it does have the free spool and all that stuff. When you pull the line out and you lock it in and then the uh, winch will pull it in. Now, how we're gonna hook this up to uh, power is a lot of times people will have a battery that is hooked up to their trailer um, I don't use my trailer enough to justify having a battery, let alone justify to leaving a battery out there because I don't think this is going to be a rare occasion that I'm going to have to use this. All right, so with this, we can use a little power pack like this, a little jump starter, or you can use some jumper cables, which is what I'm going to do. Um, there's some 25 foot jumper cables that we'll wind up getting um, that should reach the truck all the way up to the truck battery and all the way to the back of the trailer. Um, and then you just put positive, positive, negative, negative, and then you can either use your wired remote, or you got a couple of uh, wireless remotes. So there we go. And then this, this whole thing should be able to fit in the back of the toolbox. So whenever I need it, it is locked all the time and I do have extra locks. So I got 20 feet of this two inch inside diameter. I think it's a quarter inch square tubing, which that's gonna be our hitch receiver. Then let's go back out to the yard. Uh, so here's what I'm thinking. I have this, uh, I think it's six inch tubing um that i got and i was thinking about cutting it off but i think i might leave it this long 
put on a locking door and I can probably store some chains inside there. So it's not much of a toolbox, but it's unusable space anyways. But uh, what this will do, this will raise up the, the mounting point because we'll also have the that two inch inside diameter tubing that'll come right here. We'll have to cut this out, which is good because we can also, I weld this on all on the side as much as I can all over the place. And then we put that, the tubing on top, we'll weld on top of this and then we'll weld this section into that two inch tubing as well. So it should be super, super strong. Definitely overkill. I could probably just have bolted it down to this, the metal decking on this trailer because I'll be tying it into uh, the frame up here. That should be plenty of power or plenty of strength. I don't know. I want to do it this way. So <laughs> I guess that's why we're doing it. It's too hot to really do all of this stuff and I will have to move this trailer to the front. See that's all sweat. Um, plus I have to move this trailer up to the front so I can weld on it and cut it and all that stuff. And so we'll do that another day. So, all right, uh, I'll, I'll get back with you. It might be a couple days from now, but I'll get back with you. All right, here we go. This is just a little, uh, right at six inches. Should be square. Yeah, six inch square. And it's about 19 and a half inches long. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grind down, I'm going to grind down angles on all of this, but on one of them. So there, there's a weld right here. Um, so we're going to file an angle on that so we can fit over that weld. And then we're going to grind off the paint on this and on this side over here. We'll also, see my shadow? We'll also grind off the paint probably on the outside of this. And then we'll get to cutting on this here in a minute. So, got this on there. We'll go ahead and mark it. And then, we'll go ahead and grind off right here, and we'll grind off on the sides. And I'll get my smaller grinder for that. Alrighty, so video cut off, <laughs> obviously. So here we go. Um, went ahead and welded that on there, did a couple stitch welds. Uh, it's amazing how some of these look pretty decent. 
and then other ones oh, how well this is showing up but these are the settings I was using Go ahead and turn this off for a little bit all right so we got, got it welded on there and uh, on that side that side you can kind of see um, do a little bit of stitch welding on this side and on the other side so now that that's done uh, besides all the force is going to be pulling it this way um, not not necessarily twisting it off or pushing it back so um, these weld these welds need to be strong but they don't need to be 13,000 pounds strong <laughs> all right found the center of this which is three inches and I eyeballed it to about the center of this which obviously you can see I had to redo but um, so that's the that's about the center so I measured over an inch and a quarter drew a line inch and a quarter so that should give me two and a half inches so hopefully that pipe will uh, fit in there um, I think this is a Linux blade I learned this from a 65 Ford kind of turned me on to these um, they are a lot slower than your regular cutoff disc but they last so much longer so pick your poison on that one all right we'll go ahead and cut this off I don't yeah I don't think this will work probably have to come back with the sawzall and uh, cut that out so let me go ahead and do that So went ahead and drilled a 5 8 hole in the trailer hitch part of it. I did that while it wasn't on here. Obviously it makes it a little bit easier. I tack welded everything in there. Um, I used a square to make sure it's all square. And to me it's square enough. There is a bit of a gap between this and this so I'm just going to fill that in uh, as much as I can. And then uh, we'll go. We'll go from there. We'll see what we can do. Um, I'll, I also might come with some kind of a brace or something from there to there. Just to kind of fill that in a little bit better. But that's where we're at. All right, guys, so here we go. Uh, we'll keep you on this side. This weld looks a little bit better. <laughs> but um, what I did with this, I had some angle iron. I had some angle iron to box this in, cut it off there, welded it, and then cut the top of it off. Um, that'll just keep water and stuff from falling inside of here. I did the best I could underneath I mean you know <laughs> I don't do this for a living so what, what more do you want um I did have to grind this off just a little bit um, so it would slide far enough in and I think that's about it I just need to slap some paint on there so we'll do that and I'll get right back with you 
So, here is a just an old hinge. It's actually a kind of heavy duty hinge, but uh, this is what this is what I'm going to use. Um, if you're putting these on, there's a right way and a wrong way. The one with the hump goes on the outside. The flat goes on the inside. So let me get that piece of metal. I did create a bevel. I don't know how well you can see it or not. Yeah, there you go. Um, that's going to go on the bottom where that, where that is. Alright, so I'm going to try and do this without getting in your way, but I probably will get in your way, but you'll see the end. Alright, so here's the other thing. So we're going to put this up on this side. This is going to be on the door. And then I'll drill a hole and I'll be able to put a lock on there. Okay, now I think I'm done uh, as far as the welder and all that stuff goes. I may grind this corner off just so it may not be so sharp. Uh, maybe same thing here. Um, I'll get this lined up, drill a hole through there, put a lock on there. Um, might just put a hitch pin through there because I'm not, I don't have anything in there right now. But uh, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, I was thinking about blocking that in. But I don't, mm, I don't think I'm going to. We'll, we'll figure it out. If if I get a lot of rain or something like that in there, I may block that off. All right. Try not to burn my leg. Basically, you'll just straddle this like this. Put that in there. Grab your pen. Pen through there. That ain't going nowhere. Go get your uh, get your positive and negative cables. Put that to your battery. Plug in your remotes. Good to go. All right, guys. It's it's a bit darker. It was just too hot to go into everything. Uh, and I think I was losing consciousness, and I probably was rambling and stuff. But so here's a. It all fits inside here. I don't know how well you can see it, but yeah, the whole winch fits in here. And then I'll also have my uh, set of jumper cables will go in here as well. But again, like I said, any it'll work on any two inch receiver hitch. So again, I can stick it on the back of this truck, stick it on the back of my wife's vehicle. And obviously, like I said, uh, on the trailer i thought about putting a winch or a receiver hitch on the top of the bucket um so that's that's a possibility they have a two inch receiver hitch for the three point as well so go on the front or the back and i don't, I don't know if y'all remember me making this this is on a older video but i put a two inch receiver hitch on the zero turn so you know if I wanted to uh, rip the zero turn in half I guess 
I can do it. But yeah, again, I think I'll put just uh, some angle iron right here just to block that off. Hadn't made up my mind for sure on that. And then I still need to drill the hole. Now let me put some chain in there or rope or, I don't know, whatever you can think of put in there. Let me know what y'all think. If uh, you have any other ideas that I could do, let me know. I'll put some some links in the description below if, if y'all are interested in any of this. All right, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. See ya.